Hey, welcome to the Charlie Paparelli Show. I'm Charlie Paparelli, and today we're going to be talking about best practices for entrepreneurs, and the best practice is the morning routine. To be sure you don't miss an episode, please subscribe at paparelli.com. Simply submit your email address, then you'll receive this uh, the uh, announcement of this weekly interview. And as a bonus, on Tuesday mornings, I actually publish a blog for entrepreneurs. I'm Charlie Paparelli. For 30 years, I've been helping entrepreneurs achieve their dream of starting and building their companies. My guest today is Kareem Abonega. Kareem is the founder and CEO of Practice Benefits Corp. in New York City. Kareem is a social entrepreneur. He's a friend, and he has dedicated his life to empowering minority communities in big cities through education and economic opportunity. Kareem is top of list for me as a social entrepreneur. He built an organization with real market impact. It is changing people's lives from now and going forward. Kareem and I were on a double date lunch while he was in Atlanta. Kareem's up in New York City. And while he was here in Atlanta, we were on this double date, and his wife mentioned his morning routine, which absolutely fascinated me. And that was a couple of months ago. I'd just been thinking about doing this and looking forward to it. And I wanted Kareem to share his morning routine w routine with you. So there's an expression. I did a little bit of research on morning routines, and I found an expression that was written that I thought captures it all. And it says, if you win the morning, you win the day. So Kareem, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you, Charlie. And yeah, I, I know from that lunch, we're going to just expose how weird my life is, but um, it has definitely been a secret to so much of my success. Well, that's really cool. Well, I wanted to start this out just to, to, to what were your, to go back to where you really started to your roots. All right. And mm -hmm. so what were your mornings like while you were growing up? Where was it in Queens? Yeah, I grew up yeah. in Queens, New York. Um, what was the, what were those mornings like with mom and whatever, you know? Yeah, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I guess depending on the age, but get woken up for school, maybe went, maybe didn't, um, would sleep in a little bit more if I wasn't going to school. If I did, I got ready and got out of the house. And in the days where I didn't go into school, um, I'd stay at home. Maybe one of my siblings would be there and we just watch every single morning show, The Price is Right, Judge Mathis, Judge Judy, Jerry Springer would come on and we just go through all of those shows. Um, before I knew it, the, the day was coming to an end, did dinner, and then, yeah, the rest of the day kind of went from there. But yeah, not, nothing like where it, is, where it is today. So when you grew up, it was like for me, it was like your morning, morning routine was is sort of like you fell into whatever was going on, right? I think the biggest transition for me was from college into, I guess, the the real world, as they say, after you graduate, because you then for the first time have control over your life in a way that you've never had before, right? When I was a child, my routines were sort of dictated by what my family was doing. It wasn't up to you whether or not you wanted to continue sleeping if someone came and woke you up or someone was using the bathroom at a certain time. And so... Yeah. Um, when you move out on your own or you have a roommate, you have your own space for the first time, you kind of get to decide. So was that in college? Uh, college, I kind of felt like I had the pressure of school, classes, and you kind of work your schedule and everything around that. It was post-college for me was that transition. Oh, so, okay. Not to say I didn't build habits and things during college that were helpful. Um, I definitely think I did and a lot of my – like hunger for knowledge and that that thirst of like always trying to improve myself i think definitely originated when i was in college and maybe even right before that but it was post college where i said for the first time like wow i, I really you, do I just cover college for just a second so you went to cornell so you're yep. there with very bright people you know does it even if people are bright does that mean that they're pretty well organized and and uh and put good disciplined routines in place Oh, no, not at all. No I mean, I mean just say that okay. <laughs> you, have, you have the mad genius, you know, comes to mind sometimes. You know, just because you're smart doesn't mean you're organized. And some of the <laughs> most intelligent people have, have their own mess. And what, um, 
I, it's not so much about the chaos as much as it's like controlled chaos. There's people who can find a pencil and a stack of a million things because they know where it is. And so they know where the disorganization sort of leaps to. Mm -hmm. uh, I was never that person. I always erred on the side of like clutter lists um, and would, would probably say like I have that OCD sometimes of trying to keep everything neat and organized. And yeah. Definitely subscribe to that belief of like a clean environment or an organized environment and you have a clear mind or a clear uh, thought. And so, um, so you I had would that. Say like, that yeah, was that, something that, that was you, something you always college, did. Yeah. Yeah. I like made my bed in the morning after I got up like that kind of like oh took care God. of my space, made sure things were organized. You know, I, I definitely I, I took pride in the space I had. Um, and I think some of that what a too difference was, from the way you kind of, like you said, from where you, the morning routine when you grew up. Yeah. Well, I didn't have any control. And that was the other thing I'd say, like, I, I didn't own the space I was in. I was, I was one of seven. And so I always shared a room my entire life. I shared a room until I got to college and even my first like year of college. Um, the biggest difference was I had my own space and I had control over it. I could clean up my side of the bed when I was a kid or clean up the room and, one of my siblings will come and mess it up. And you know, I got you. what ha happens a couple of times, then you're eventually like, I'm cleaning this place up for everyone else to just mess it up. It's the same with the dishes, like well, those little things that you think but about. I love what you said though, when you get into college, you finally had your own space and you had control of your own space. So that's a real, that's, that's one, that's a step closer to this sort of idea of, of morning routine. But when you get out of well, college then, go ahead, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say, and, and you get to college and you're like, you get it for the first time, but you don't know what to do with it yet. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you want it and then you finally get it. And then you're like, oh, this is great. What do I do it? <laughs> so what happened? So you get out of college, you said, this is when I was finally, now it was, I was on my own time, right? Yeah. So when did you first discover this, this, this idea of just morning routines? I, I you know, why didn't you go back to the price is right? <laughs> 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 the television that wasn't getting me anywhere. <laughs> um, no, I, th I think, I think I, it didn't start with me come and figure out a morning routine. I think it started with trying to figure out like how to achieve success. Right. And okay. how, and whatever that means to other folks. But for me, like I kind of defined what legacy I wanted to keep um, at the end of my life and, and started backwards planning from there and said, okay, how do I achieve this legacy? And what does it really look like? Who are the people that I think embody even elements of that? And I made my short list of the 10 or 15 people whose lives I admired and felt like aspects of I would really enjoy. Okay. Um, and then from there, dug deeper. And it happened to be a bunch of like really successful entrepreneurs and politicians, people who are having real impact on the world. Um, one of my core values is making a difference. And so in, in hindsight, um, it's, it makes sense, like why I gravitated towards those folks. And then you see all the Now, are these people, the ones that you admire, that you made a list of, are they people that you had a relationship with or you knew or they were? No, no really. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about people everyone knows, like Bill Gates, uh, Warren Buffett, oh, Barack okay. Obama, John F. Kennedy, FDR, yeah. um, John D. Rockefeller. So I, I became a It's quite a, a list. There's multiple and generations, so, okay? Yeah. Well, well, it wasn't just one. And then after living, Martin Luther King Jr., just looking at these influential folks in society who, whose legacies I admired, um, some who are currently still building and others who had built. And, you know, I, I wanted to have that same sort of like outsized impact on the world. And I knew what, what better way to do that than to follow what your role models have done. And so that's where it started. It started there. And then all of the research that has been done around them, because they're very public figures around mm -hmm. how they spent their days, what is it that they do? And then from there, um, folks start doing things first, right? Um, they start practicing something or doing something, and then someone studies them and says, you know what? Actually, what they're doing here, there's evidence or research behind it. And so waking up early, start started with folks waking up early first, right? There's no science or research to it originally. And then, then the research and the science followed. And so I started just like borrowing practices and then trying to make them my own in a way that felt authentic and genuine and a lot for me. Um, so and there's some things at, I, at a young age like that, you're not really, you're seeing, you're, you're studying them and their, and their best practices and you're not questioning them saying, well, that's probably not what did it. 
you say you just accepted it. Well, I said if all of these people had all of these things in common <laughs> and they all ended up in the same place. And I, I guess there, there's definitely a flaw in that, in that thinking, right? Because they're all the people who weren't included yeah. <laughs> and not who were probably just as successful and whatnot. But I, I think for me, the, the list of folks I had picked or was gravitating towards um, luckily were super public and had everything out there. And were so was there something sharing. that they had in common then, this morning routine? Uh, the morning routine itself wasn't, but there were practices that they all engaged in. So they woke up early, they exercised regularly, they meditated, they read religiously. And so it was those elements. And then there were other things too on the other side of it, like taking cold showers, um, certain drinks that they would have. And so I went through the entire like gamut of the things that they did and like slowly started to integrate practices that I felt uh, fit for me and were things I could keep to. And I, I did it like one chunk at a time. So I didn't start with, oh, this is the entire routine. Let me sit there and start doing it. Well, that's I started what I mean. With, I was going to ask you about that. So how did you, so you were motivated to do the morning routine because you wanted, if they were, you wanted to be successful, you wanted to have an impact, right? Like you change people's lives is, so I need to do what they were doing, right? I need to kind of follow exactly. those practices. I mean, that was that simple. I mean, they tell you that too, right? In the workplace, if you, you want to move ahead, like figure out what your boss is doing, yeah, start to absolutely. do their work, right? Okay. So, so how do you I go about, just, so how do you yeah. go from that? So you say, you know, they're, we're all different. They're all different. They're all successful. They all had high impact. You want to be that person. So you say, you know, I need to, I need to have a morning routine of some type. So how did you, what was your first step in designing it? Um, I started doing things. So I would try things. And okay. even to this day, I experiment. So the, the first thing I picked up was meditating and like meditation. And so I started with some mindfulness meditation. That was and you the never one did that before. Never done it before. This is like my early 20s now. So I like I'd been introduced to the idea. Yeah. Um, but it was one of those things I just sort of felt like, oh, it's far fetched. It's too complicated, hard, it's boring, whatever it is. And I one day like picked up an app, it broke it down for me. And I kind of felt like the the stress and the pressure just like alleviated. And then I became consistent and started to have other people tell me um, that they felt like I was a lot less tense and a lot, uh, not tense, intense. So in college, apparently I was very intense trying to do a million and one things all the time. Oh, and they're like, yeah, I, I know you enough that you can, if you, if you, if you let it go, you can go <laughs> straight through somebody. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty good. You wear somebody out. You've got that level of intensity inside of you, which is part of what makes you successful. It's just a matter of controlling it. But was this meditation part of a morning routine? Is that what that, to get it back to that? Start, start in the mornings like that. When I would read on like one of the best times to meditate, I mean, folks will give you whatever they say, but the mornings you center yourself and then they say sometime in the afternoon or end of day. So there's three times you could possibly meditate. Um, I clung to doing it in the mornings. Um, I loved. Did you get out. up at it? Did you decide I'm going to get up at a certain time or? Not yet. At that point, I was just waking up. I mean, I. You wake up, you woke up when you woke up. I woke up when I woke up. I yeah. mean, it depends on what, what I had to do for work. I would plan my commute, how long I needed to shower. And now I would the five to 10 minutes I needed to meditate. And so okay. like that was step one of it. And then that was I've the always, first morning routine. First thing that I consistently, um, I and you were, you were consistent with bed, it. after making my bed. So I started, I started with making my bed first. Ah, so okay, good. The discipline there. And I watched some like uh goal cast or something speech on like the importance of making your bed in the morning. And I took to that. And so started doing that first. And, and then what speech was that? I forget the, it was like a Marine Corps. It was a, no, viral, he was a like, Navy SEAL on, commander. Navy, okay. There you go. And he's, you know, and he's given this, he's given, about. yeah, this a, a speech to, uh, to, uh, to graduates. Yeah. And he, and he said, and you know what? That speech stuck with me so much. And I only saw it probably about two years ago. I started making my bed every morning. That's, <laughs> so the, Isn't it crazy how that speech had such it. an impact? Okay. So, start so you that. still weren't, you didn't, so your first early routine, you didn't, you got up at least in time enough, okay, so that you could From make your bed, get dressed, eat, and, and you would do your meditation. 
Well, at that point, I had I had started intermittent fasting, and so I don't eat in the mornings. Okay, so okay. that's one less thing I had to think about in the morning. And breakfast is never my favorite meal of the day, anyway. How do you so tell me this? Day. You are such a reader, and you're so <laughs> full of ideas that then you absorb ideas so quickly, and there's so many coming at you. How do you absorb personal best practices? I mean, you could be a guy that could actually drive himself batty kind of trying to take all these things on. So how do you kind of take something on and then say, that's not for me, uh, you know, to others? I think know, know your values, right? To thy own self be true. So it starts with that self-awareness, knowing what's important to you. And then, yeah, trying things out. I, I don't try everything at the same time either, right? I have my, oh, that's my, my, really order, good my cadence. So try something see if it resonates. Is it changing your life or not? Is it making it better? And if it's not, drop it. I have no issues dropping things. Um, and so you were doing are, this meditation. Okay. So you adopted that you're doing the meditation and you said, I'm going to stick to this every day. And you weren't sure that it was making a difference personally until someone told you, they made the observation, you seem to have changed. Yeah. And then I, I, I then started to see it over a longer period of time too. Okay. Like, so definitely kept that. Then the eight hours of sleep thing, uh, Ariana Huffington's like book, but also her very public like breakdown, um, which I read about at the same time and just the importance of sleep. And I think something that triggered that for me was I used to think in college, this would be the end of the all-nighters, right? When you're finished with school, cramming for an exam, whatever it is. <laughs> um, when and, and this happened, I, I graduated um, and I found myself still pulling all-nighters. And that was when I realized the importance of like habit formation because the habits, the routines, the rituals, the things that we develop at any point in our life like become routine. So in college, you have the urgency, right? I need to get this more done, whatever it is that's moving me forward. Um, after you graduate, it wasn't that anymore. It was just knowing how far you can push yourself. Uh. That like sort of like drove me to go there. It was like, yeah, I know I can do this. And so why not do it? Mm. Um, when, when actually discipline sometimes is knowing you can do it and not doing it because it's not the right thing to do. Um, and so got really fascinated with like the psychology of sleep. There's a very popular class at Cornell I never took on sleep, but um, read about that. And I was like, you know what? I, I need to prioritize this. I'm, I'm responsible for making big decisions um, on a day-to-day -day basis that impact other people's lives. And yeah. so I need to make sure that I'm making the best decisions possible. And yeah, all the psychology around sleep says you make good decisions when you're well-rested. And so and how many hours up to that point, how many hours sleep were you generally getting, you think? Uh, I would go some nights with four, some nights at six. I'd say like probably average uh -huh. five and a half, six hours. Six hours, I think, was like a good night's rest. Um, and then you just time. one day just decide, based on the yep. research, eight hours. I'm going to start doing eight hours. And that how did was you, the if beginning. you were used to like four to six hours or you, you were getting up after six hours, did you? Oh, you had to get, you were getting up after four to six hours because you had to go to work. I mean, I well, yes, but I also I went to sleep later, right? So I was doing more work at night, and then I would just wake up later. So yeah, but you it still was four to six hours from whenever I went to bed. Then. Yeah, well, I set my alarm six hours from whenever I went to bed, That's or I mean. four and a half hours from whenever I went to bed. So if you didn't set your alarm, to. you would have continued to sleep. Probably. That's what I was yeah. getting to. Yeah. Because yeah. No, when you say, oh, I'm going to get eight hours sleep and your body keeps waking up at six hours and you can't do anything about it. No. And I actually would find myself like trying to catch up on the weekend sometimes. Oh, um, but gotcha. Okay. Research there says that doesn't work either. So <laughs> I just, you know what said, let me be consistent straight through, do eight hours. Whether it's a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday, a Monday or a Wednesday. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get eight hours. And so... I started then planning my sleep. So now I had my meditation, my sleep, and making the bed. Yeah. Um, working out was something I've done religiously since I was a, a child um, for sports reasons. And then when I got to college, it became less about sports and more about just like understanding the importance of like staying in shape, staying fit, um, the impact like what you eat has on your body. So then it became a question of like, how do I get in a routine of like working out regularly 
And um, I pursue my workouts with such intensity that I sometimes don't enjoy the actual process of working out. I enjoy the after feeling and I would let it linger until the end of the day. And it would just be weighing on me, be that thing that's weighing on you all day, you know, just not looking forward to that workout. You know, I was a triathlete for a while too, doing those races. Yeah. And I realized, I read something somewhere. It was like, you know, you always want to get your workouts done in the mornings because you get the hardest part done of your day first. Right. So I started doing that, you know, I didn't, I didn't look forward to the mornings in the same way, but I did. I got the hardest part of my day done and. I always felt like after the I got hardest, through the, the workout, part of the day was this intensive workout, intense workout, um, okay. getting that done and anything after that you, you can conquer, right? Like you've conquered the body with the mindfulness, you've conquered the mind and now you have what you need to conquer the day. Yeah. I saw, I did see somebody, I did listen. I can't remember. It wasn't Jimmy Valvano, but it was on these very popular college coaches, you know, Brandon. And he, mm-hmm. and he, I, I heard he was doing, he was doing motivational talks around the country. And one of the things that he said was get the things out of the way that you dread doing, get you know, get them out of the way early. All right. And then you have the rest of the day and it's all stuff you love and you're looking forward to, you know, and that's kind of what you're telling me. Yeah. And I genuinely, and so I, I was subscribing to that and then genuinely believe that. And then now I've added an hour, hour and a half between like working out, changing, getting dressed, showering, stretching, whatever it is in that. And then you realize well, if I'm going to take an hour and a half to do that and then my meditation, I better be getting up earlier because there's no way I'm going to be able to do that when the workday starts. Yeah, this is what's happening. So you're adding to this morning routine and everything you add takes time, right? So now the morning routine is going from literally 10 minutes of meditation to now we're up to eight hours sleep. So we got get up, make the bed. <laughs> Um, meditate, exercise. What are we up to now? How long does that take? Um, I'm saying like put that at maybe an hour and 45 minutes, okay. showering and getting ready in that. Um, okay. So, so an hour 45, my, my morning routine has expanded <laughs> tenfold. And then, so then what I'm, I'm, one of, I'm one of those people who first, last thing I do before I go to sleep is I'm checking my email. And first thing I do when I wake up, I'm checking my email. And so when... When that happens, I naturally want to respond or react. And so what would happen at night is I would stay up answering those emails before. And now what was happening is once I would see something I wanted to respond to, I'd get engulfed in it and start trying to answer it. So I had to eliminate that practice in the morning of checking my email or messages first thing. Um, and then, Was that difficult for you? Yeah, and I I still can't say that I'm a hundred percent good all the time. Oh, really? Because um, this is something yeah. that really gets me is I'll get up and wait for the coffee to be made, and part of my morning routine, and I'm and I look at my email, right? And you're right. As soon as you start on it, you're in it. Yeah, and, you're. And he in. owns you, right? You know, it's taken all your mind share, and it's uh, so it's something that I have to really I have to do what you said. Which yeah. some of what I do is I say. I'm just not going to pick my phone up. <laughs> Got to stay away from it because then yeah. there's the news and there's the, before you know it, you know, you're, you're into screen time, but go ahead. Yep. So you, so that was something that you did eliminate. So did I, you eliminate it by the that. way, this, this is getting off our morning routine, but did you eliminate the uh, looking at your phone right before you went to bed and answering any emails? Uh, for the most part, yeah, half an hour before I don't I don't look at my phone anymore, and I'm disciplined enough now to like shut it off because I know the importance of like getting to bed at a certain time. Okay. So then I I, I added other things, right? So I, I keep. What going. else did we add after exercise? Okay, what do we have? Uh, man, I'm uh, I start reading, so trying to like do my readings, and I think this habit took place like really formulated as soon as the pandemic hit. Because I used to read on the move or listen to books on the move. I and remember. I that. That. Yeah, you were doing a, multiple books per week, you know, through Audible. No, I guess. no longer a thing if you're not walking somewhere <laughs> or transitioning somewhere. Right. So where, where do I fit my reading time and started to have to make time for that in the mornings. So what kind of reading do you, what, if, what that morning routine reading, what kind of reading is that? Like, what do you, what do you, is um, it more 
varies. Is it self-improvement stuff like, or is it business no, books like, or here I, like right now I'm reading The Education of an Idealist by Samantha Power. She's okay. the former uh UN like I guess delegate to the UN uh during Obama's administration. So um business books, self-improvement books, um nonfiction fiction. I usually get book recommendations from folks and that's how I like stack my reading list. So how much of um, that, how much in the morning are you reading? How much time is that? Half an hour. Half an hour. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, languages are something that I've always loved. And so, <laughs> so when did, yeah. when did this get added? When did all that show up? <laughs> so I read something somewhere about how, uh, learning foreign languages like stretches your creativity, keeps your mind alert and sharper and, it's something I've always been fascinated by. I grew up in an Arabic speaking household, yeah, but I never learned to read and write. And so I always felt like there was this limitation or barrier when it came to Arabic. And um, it was something I wanted to continue to improve. And randomly freshman year of high school, I went to a large inner city public high school and had been studying Spanish as like the foreign language that we took in middle school up until that point. But my... High school had no more time and no more space in any of the Spanish classes. And so they stuck me into a Greek class. So I, I took I took Greek for two years. <laughs> in New um, York Public City. This is New York Public High School. New York City Public High School. <laughs> um, before I finally got back into Spanish. And so Spanish is something I've always tried to keep up with. Um, and I'm now on this, like lifelong journey of trying to become proficient in Spanish, Arabic, and Greek. Um, and so I need to make time to practice languages regularly. If you don't, otherwise you lose them. And so I have my 15, 20 minutes of like consistent language practice. I use Duolingo every morning and I rotate between the languages. Um, and that I can now read in Arabic, which is like huge. I read Greek. I don't know what I think the limitation is. I don't know what the words always mean. My vocabulary is not all the way there yet, but right. Um, something I'm working on and I read and speak Spanish. And so um, more of a, a personal like lifelong thing, no rush. And I'm not going to be proficient tomorrow. I mean, I'll be using these things tomorrow, but I generally do feel what do you like you use it, to it, learn these languages. I use an app called Duolingo. And then now I have all the different keyboards on my phone in like all, I guess, four languages, English, Greek, Arabic, and Spanish. And so I like will look up words in, in different languages on Google if, if I get stuck. So, so fifteen just, to twenty minutes, and it's mostly to 20 led minutes a by, day. The, by the curriculum of Duolingo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Short and so easy. Now I got another fifteen. So where? Do, by the way, where did you read that uh, that learning the learning or dedicating yourself to learning a foreign language will increase your uh, create. You know what? I, I don't. What said, I you? don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember where I read it because I read so much, and maybe that's the bigger takeaway: is like I always want to continue reading. Um, and by the way, there are things that I've tried that I've then stopped. Like the this all this research that supported like taking a cold shower, right? I did that for a couple of weeks, and I was like, this is just not me. So. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I, you didn't I, see. I, is it was that it was uncomfortable, or that you didn't see any benefits from it? Um, I think it was a combination of the two. I, yeah. The discomfort wears off. I mean, it's like the feeling of like jumping into an ice cold shower. Now I can do it. It's fine. Your breathing alters for a little bit. And I got to a place where I was like sitting in them for a while, but I, I think I just didn't enjoy them. Maybe that's, that's the bigger takeaway. Like I okay. really, I got no joy out of it. You know, my workouts, I hate, right. But at the end you get this euphoric feeling you see the impact, the change on your body, on your health, yeah. um, your well-being. These cold showers, I wasn't, I wasn't seeing anything. So it was just like it's like burning your hand or something with no positive reward or anything okay. after. So you so, get out of the cold shower and you weren't like, oh man, I'm ready for the day. I was just like, day. no, I need to and warm up. I, right? <laughs> yeah, depending on the country you're in or the, the <laughs> state that you're in, your cold water is also relative. Like. <laughs> The Dominican Republic cold water isn't the cold water that's in New York City. And so I started to question the validity of the people who are saying they're taking cold right, showers. Right. Well, like, let's drop the cold shower thing. So, so you dropped, the, so you went past the cold shower. Then what? Then what? What else did you uh, try and drop? Um, what else did I try and drop? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I just know that okay. was the most recent one. 
That was um, the one that, that really comes to mind. That was the most recent that that came up. Um, so is this then, your, so is this now your re- morning routine? Is after eight hours sleep, I then get up. Take me through the just step by step to what you do. Go ahead. Sure. So now I, I wake up at four thirty in the morning. So that's Monday, or yeah, I would say Monday through Friday. I'm up at four thirty, and so that means I'm in bed Sunday through. Uh, Thursday by 8.30 p.m. Okay. So that's like the biggest sacrifice. I wake up, um, I brew a cup of coffee, dark roast. I started drinking coffee just this year. So I didn't drink coffee before that. Um, while the coffee's brewing, I do my meditation. Um, I send a couple morning texts to a couple people. Um, and then I engage in my language practice. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I'll read. Um, I take a little break now that we're working from home. I'll get like an hour of like work time done, like just clear thought, big thing I want to accomplish, uh, writing, getting myself organized. Then I'll, I'll work out for an hour or so, stretch, shower at that point, get ready for the day. Um, and that's sort of the morning. I don't make that bed anymore because I'm, I'm married and my wife is still sleeping. So no, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, know that one. That I know one. that one. I know that one. So is that um, the whole routine? That's, that's the whole routine. Are you where's um, the shower and all this? Right after the workout. Right after the workout, then shower. Yeah, shower and get, get dressed. Yep. And then you're uh then you're at work at that point, since that we all point. work from home. Okay. So how long does that take from four thirty to what? Um, I'd like to give myself two and a half hours to get through my whole like morning and routine comfortably without rushing through anything. So four thirty so, to seven. Basically. I mean, just there's an hour of like work in between there, hour, hour and a half of like focused, productive work. So yeah, sometimes my day starts a little bit later in terms of the actual work day, but I can get through everything by seven. But the workout, so you're saying that the time after you read and you and you take a break to do that hour of work, sometimes that might extend, but then you don't, then of course yeah, you so meant- exercise, okay? And that's going to be what it is. I'm sure that's a pretty staid routine or maybe based on the day you have whatever you do. Yeah. And I, I generally don't have meetings before 930 now. And I think this is the the luxury of like privilege and planning now. And so I, I, don't have to it the same way. And so I also recognize that that's a blessing. In, You're itself. A, in New York city, being in New York city, you don't have a, uh, they're not, there's not really a breakfast. Breakfast isn't part of the sort of work routine. If you were the work day, like we, like in Atlanta, you know, people say, well, let's catch breakfast. Right. You know, because we're a commuting town by car. Right. So it's an easy thing to do. But if you've got people coming in from Long Island on trains and you've got people on subways and you got breakfast doesn't seem to be, um, yeah, it's part of the I, it's not that big of a, culture. Yeah, I mean, you're, we're more likely to go and get a drink after work or right. go get dinner. Because that's what screws me breakfast. up in my morning routine is somebody says, and I and I swore off as I got older, I swore off, I said, I'm not doing the breakfast thing. Okay. <laughs> and I said, I'm not doing the alarm clock thing either. And what happens to me, it doesn't matter. I'm not asleep. And it seems like whenever I go to bed, I still wake up at the same time usually around 5.30 or 6 in the morning, okay? So it's not like, oh, yeah, the alarm doesn't go off. I'm in till 9 or something, you know? And I find mm-hmm. myself going to bed generally at about the same time. So I'm getting that. I've pushed like you do for eight hours sleep. It makes one big difference for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think the other big thing for me is just recognizing that these things are important. I, I want to live as long a life as possible, you know? Yeah. and. God forbid something happens. I'd rather it happen because of something untimely than it be because of some, something I have control over. And for the things that I'm talking about, right? Sleeping, um, exercising, meditating, like these things have been known to reduce stress or increase your longevity. And in so many ways, I, I just, I treat them and I think about them as important as breathing. And I think when you get to that place in your mind, right, if you tell yourself this is just as important as breathing and you need to get them in, into a state where they become as routine as breathing, otherwise they become that chore, that thing on your to-do list that you always have to remember to do. And mm-hmm. I think at the 
essence and the core of a lot of the research on success. Um, I think Bill Gates and Warren Buffett said it best. They said like the secret to success is being focused. And focus means like having the clarity to be able to pursue one thing with vigor um, and do it relentlessly. And then the second thing I would say to that is like having the discipline Mm. to create the space for you to be able to be focused. And my morning routine, and I guess the the secret behind all of it is, is, is that it becomes habitual and it becomes routine. And I've done all of these things to prioritize taking care of myself so I can then have the space after to focus. Um, and when I focus, I'm focusing on something that's really important and meaningful to me, right? And building our company, furthering our mission, having the impact that we're having on the schools that we partner with in New York City and beyond. So, so much of it is how do you do, to get these you things know, out of the way because I have to do them. When you were, that all makes total sense. And when, when you were single, I get this, okay? But then you're not single. You're married now, Okay. And so she gets up and you're doing what you're doing and she wants to share what happened to her, what she's thinking. And she just wants to be with Kareem. I mean, she loves you and she just wants to have time with you, you know, and, and here you are like, honey, honey, you know, (laughs) how do you handle, how do do you, how have you and her, how have you decided how this works? How have you set this time aside? So she goes, well, that's just what he does because I got that at lunchtime. I mean, at that, yeah, at that lunch we had. I I think I came into the relationship sort of saying like, this is who I am and accept me for who I am. (laughs) I I was waking up at 4.30 at at that point before we sort of got together. And um, Cadacia was actually waking up at 4.30 with me at certain points to work out. I only found out later on that then she was going back to sleep after <laughs> I left to get my day started. <laughs> but so but she, it's who I was. And, and I, I think I negotiate on the weekends, right? I'm not waking up at 4.30 on Saturday and Sunday. Um, what do you do on and, Saturday and Sunday? I meant to ask you about that. Uh, depends on what we have on the agenda. Um, we also have our, our sacred like date night time once a week. So whether it's a Thursday night or a Friday night, um, and then Saturdays really depends on what time I go to bed. But if it's Thursday night, Friday night, if it's Thursday night, you got to be in bed by 830. I'm in bed by 830 on Thursday night. Yeah, there's no question. I got to tell you, if we're going to have date night on Thursday night, it starts at (laughs) 5. Okay. Right. 530. (laughs) Yeah, right. That's what I figured. Okay. (laughs) But then if Um, you're, so you don't, so you don't have a morning routine for two days a week. I do still. It just. It just starts at a different time. So well, if I go to bed to at midnight, I still do it. It just means I'm waking up at 8 and I'm not doing anything until 1030. No kidding. Right? So you're seven days a week on this routine. Because it has to be like breathing, right? I don't stop breathing on Saturday and Sunday, right? Your, your body well, doesn't... Ben- okay, need- so then tell, tell, tell me, tell the audience, what's the benefits that you have derived from this? Because like you said, I've tried things. And then I stopped some, okay, because I didn't see the benefits or it didn't feel good to me, right? There was, it was unfulfilling, if you will, right? So what, are, what benefits uh, have you gotten from this two and a half hour morning routine morning that routine. you're so diligent about that you like breathing? Yeah, I mean, I, I would just look at my company and organization over the last like few years and would just look at the growth, the impact we've been able to have, the thousands upon thousands of children now that we're serving. And I think that motivates me to keep going, to have that clarity. I I'm, I'm, have not had to take a sick day um, with the exception of like getting COVID since last March. Um, and that was the only time I've had a sick day in the last probably 10 years. Mm. Um, and so I, I think it's that. And I, yeah, no injuries, no, like I work out seven days a week. Don't pull muscles never strained wow. anything and so no back pain or anything like that and so oh, you're in I great just, shape you're in great shape there's no doubt about yeah, it but you've gotten like these this. benefits that really you uh you looked at the benefits is is the results of your efforts after the morning routines that's what i'm hearing from you and the the lifestyle i want and maintain like I, how do you how do you how do you not how do you guard against threats and what are the greatest threats to the morning routine 
Um, when you're young, it's the going out, the invitations. I, I'd say actually the biggest threat is FOMO. Right? Is what? The FOMO, the fear FOMO. of missing out. <laughs> that, that is hands down the biggest like threat. Um, because you always want to be there and, and guess what? Most things happen at night or they don't happen. You think they're going to happen. And I think that's what I realized early on. And actually waking up early was my like protection against that threat, having to wake up at four 30. That's not to say I don't ever compromise. There aren't any nights during the week where like, if something were to come up a charity event or something I really believe in requires me to stay up a little bit later that I won't do it. Um, just means I'm going to wake up still eight hours after I go to bed and still have my two and a half hour routine. But the things I make exceptions for are fewer and further between, right? There's no, you just say no, I just say no, I don't do that. I I can't. That's how important this morning routine is to me. I got it. It's not, it's that and the sleep, right? And so if if my trade-off is sleep, the bar for which I'm going to trade things off or something else I'm going to compromise in the morning that I really value and know is important to increasing my longevity, I'm more likely than not to say no. Um, And most of the time, you know, when you go out and you're younger, half the time it's like a flop. It's a waste of time anyway, right? So, or you you wind up just staying up and watching shows or news, you get caught up on social media and if you just shut down earlier, you don't have to worry about that. And in the morning, I have I my. What struck this me, what I need to when get we through. struck me when we were at, at lunch that day, it was a Sunday. We went to church and then we come and we go to lunch. And, and uh, Kadeshia said, you know, he has to. We have these plans for this afternoon while in Atlanta. And then we're leaving for a flight. A flight that was, I think, was it a 6 30 a.m. flight on Monday morning? 6 30. Yep. And, so two and, and a half and hours before that. And you moved hours. it back two and a half hours, right? And you said, I have to get up at. Well, I moved that and then I do eight hours on top of that, right? So call it yeah. two and a half hours of the day. So and I think I you were going to, to bed to to like 7.30 that morning or that, that evening, I think. Yeah. And then I said, well, how the heck do you go to bed at 7.30 having just, I don't understand. How did you do that? I fell asleep. I mean, I. Sometimes I'm not asleep right away. And if that's the case, like I'll, it's about resting too, right? So I'll go in yeah. bed and I'll close my eyes. And yeah, if I don't sleep the entire time, so be it. But I, I rest. My body's resting. And there you I'll go. So sheep. your requirement is simply this. Yeah. I have to get eight hours sleep and I have to have two and a half hours for my morning routine. And I, that, that is said, non-negotiable. And that's how you live it. 99% of the time there's that that wow. 1% where it's not it's not possible you can't get two and a half hours and eight hours right and so I know where I can compromise like I can turn the eight to seven I know how to get my workout down from an hour to like a hit workout with a stretch and maybe get that done down to like half an hour but um that that's the exception rather than the norm I love it I love it. So tell me this. You talk to entrepreneurs and you get asked to speak to entrepreneurial groups, okay? Whether in in your community there in New York or in colleges, people that are interested in entrepreneurship. Do you ever bring this up to them? I don't talk about this stuff a lot, but I, I you know, and just having our conversation, I just can't under, under, yeah, undersell how important it is, right? I don't worry about health issues. I don't worry about like things happening because mm. I've, I've proactively mitigated against these things. And so these are the things that are going to take you away from your business and they're going to take you away from your mission. They're going to take you away from the work you're doing. Um, you know, plan. What, what I'm doing here is just being intentional. I've said these things are really important and I have to do them. And, and I, I pursue a lot of other parts of my life with the same level of discipline, right? Spending time with my siblings, doing my date night with my wife. And so I, I do all of the things or I plan out the things that I have to do first. And then I fill in all of the other things around that. And then from there, you know what you can and can't do. Just prioritize. My plan, so what's inviolate is the eight hours sleep, the two and a half hours. And then you've got your time with Kadesha and... Right. You start working out from your family and then you have what's remaining time for business. And then you have friends oh. beyond that. Right. I mean, kind of a deal. work, friends, life, whatever else is what you uh, fill in there. 
um, these things are what keep me full. They give me the energy that I need to continue to like move yeah. forward and give a hundred percent in those moments when I'm, when I'm everywhere else, when I'm at work, when I'm with my family, when I'm with my wife. I think um, one of the things that sort of, like you talked about the thing that threatens it is fear of missing out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Something that threatens it for me is I feel like if someone asked for my time, you know, serving others, you know, that I feel sort of on a, on a, excuse me, honor bound in effect, you know, it's part of my, I guess it must be part of my core values, right? Is that, ah, oh, yeah, I, I can do that. And so I'll compromise my morning routine, which would include writing, okay, which is my highly creative time. And instead I'm doing that. Now you've mm-hmm. taught me, you don't need to do that. You can still do that for other people, make that commitment, but you just need to move the clock back. Instead of yeah. getting up at five thirty, Charlie, you need to get up at four thirty, and then you still you want to do that. Man, I've learned from you, and in preparing for this, by the <laughs> way, I started to outline. I find myself doing multiple routines. Okay, I shouldn't say routines. I have multiple sort of things that I do based on the day, and what I need to do is I need. You got me thinking. I have to actually have a routine. It has to be like breathing. It has to be something that I'm not giving. I don't have any choices, if you will, or decisions mm-hmm. to make in the morning. I just do this thing. It's the classic Steve Jobs, like turtleneck thing, right? He woke up and wore a black turtleneck. It's one less thing to think about, right? So right. figure out what those things are that are important and put them in that category of making them like breathing and one less thing to think about. And you can then provide the energy to be focused so you can be successful at whatever it is you're pursuing. So give me this, just close this out with this. You you mentioned something. You said that, that Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, they said success is all about focus, uh, focus right? So then you said, so to be able to, fo- I, I ultimately want to be successful. So in order to be successful, I must focus. Okay. In order to focus, I have to have discipline. Is that what you said? To create the space to allow that. Yeah. So it's I have one to have thing to discipline then, to create the space to allow me to focus. Yeah. You can create the most ideal morning routine and you follow it once a week or twice a week, not going to have the same impact for you. And so I think that's where folks struggle. How it's, does, tell they, me this, how does the focus, how does the discipline create the space for me to focus? Just connect that. Well, in in this case here, I've outlined the entire morning routine and I do it every single day, right? If I did it some days and not others, I'd have to think about when I'm going to do these things. And so I don't have the discipline to follow a morning routine. Okay. Um, And I'd I'd say the corollary to this is what's your evening routine, right? How do you wind down? Because just as important is how you're starting your day. But that's a conversation for another day. (laughs) Gee. You're fantastic. I always love talking. To you. You're so full of ideas, but you you apply stuff. I mean, you you're just not somebody who's widely read, you know, well widely read. But you you sit there, you apply things. I mean, uh, I'm, a, that makes I'm sense a walking to you. experiment. Yeah, you walking experiment. <laughs> well, thanks for taking this time with me course, on this subject. Charlie. I know that you're you're always generous for me with me with your time, and I appreciate that. I'm glad I slid love you in and love what you do for the entrepreneurs here. So. Anytime. All right. Well, I'm going to close this out and then uh, just say goodbye to you there. So thanks for joining the Charlie Paparelli Show. It is, uh, this has been something that's been exciting for me is to understand these routines. What was exciting for me is just preparing for this, having read a couple of articles in preparation for a discussion, and then uh, seeing all that uh, and, and learning all that Kareem learned and how he applied it. So I'm going to start designing my routine. You design yours. Thanks for joining me. Take care.